I am Alabama Sam Englehart, also Executive Secretary of the Citizens Council of Alabama. We are dedicated to the preservation of segregation. We will segregate the buses, and if necessary, I shall arrest every agent of the federal government who attempts to conspire to put across an integration of race. Those very old, very amazing clips live today in the NBC News archives. Uh, they're indexed, indexed under the term Citizens Council. The old white segregationist group is in the news now in 2010, because now in 2010, a man who wants to be president in 2012 this week praised the influence of the citizens' councils on segregation-era Mississippi, where he was born and raised and where he's now governor. Haley Barber telling the Weekly Standard, quote, You heard of the citizens' councils? Up north, they think it was like the KKK where I come from. It was an organization of town leaders. Haley Barber's spokesman initially tried denying that the governor had ever said the thing that he said. The spokesman said, quote, Governor Barber did not comment on the Citizens Council movement's history. He commented on the business community in Yazoo City, Mississippi. When that caused coffee to shoot from the noses of blog readers everywhere, many keyboards were ruined. Haley Barber decided instead that he would eat crow. He said on his website, quote, the Citizens Council is totally indefensible, as is segregation. Because Haley Barber would like to be president, getting it on the record that he thinks the Citizens Council, as he said, is totally indefensible, that is probably mandatory for him. That's because the history of the Citizens Council in his hometown in Yazoo City is clear and it is ugly and it is all over the Internet. In 1955, for example, there was a petition to the school board in Yazoo City for integration. In response, the Citizens Council took out a big advertisement in the town paper. It listed the names of the people who had signed the petition for integration. This is the council's ad here. It was reprinted in a 1955 report about Yazoo City in the Afro-American newspaper. We saw this linked uh, in the comments on Huffington Post, actually. When you're asking for integration in 1950s Mississippi and the Citizens Council posts your name all over town, one account says they even propped this list up in cotton fields around town. When you're one of those people who dared to ask for equal treatment, and this is the response from those town leaders and the Citizens Council, what do you think happens to you if your name's on this list, huh? Quoting from the article in the Afro-American, many signers have been penalized by loss of employment. Under this pressure, some have removed their names from the petition. J. H. Wright, a plumbing contractor listed above, lost two construction jobs, was refused plumbing supplies by a wholesale house, and his grocer told him a loaf of bread would cost him a dollar. He plans to move elsewhere. He plans to move elsewhere, destination unknown, anywhere but Yazoo City. Because that organization of town leaders, Haley Barber praises for helping Yazoo City integrate peacefully and all. Uh, that organization has run this man out of town. By 1988, the Citizens Council had become the Council of Conservative Citizens. Their links to the anti-immigration people pushing SB 1070 in Arizona helped them make our TV show back in April. We have the picture of the fair of the uh, website here, Council of Conservative Citizens. Yes, uh, Erectus Walks Among Us. It's a sort of mock-up between a black person and an ape. Uh, they also have this summary of a recent Al Sharpton interview, quote, Sheriff Arpaio debates the nappy-headed race hustler. That's the current incarnation of the Citizens Council, Mr. Barber so fondly remembered uh, before he then roundly condemned it. The Council of Conservative Citizens is now mounting a boycott of the movie Thor because the movie makers cast an African-American as a god. Fetishizers of Norse gods will get you for that. You might think Haley Barber, defender of peaceful integration, would want nothing to do with a group like this, but you would be wrong. Here is Haley Barber in 2003 making a campaign stop at a barbecue hosted by the Council of Conservative Citizens. That's him right there, third from the right. Uh, he's standing with the council's field director. I'd like to show you this picture as it originally appeared on the council's website, but as Dave Weigel reported this week, uh, they actually replaced Mr. Barber's photo on their website with this. The caption is still there from when they had the photo, at least in the old internet archives. Uh, but now, instead of the picture of Haley Barber, they've just put up a big picture of a rebel flag, and it says Confederate Wave on it. And no, we did not Photoshop in this giant rebel flag. We did not make this up. This is what they replaced Haley Barber with on their website. 
The reason Haley Barber was visiting with the fine folks of the Council of Conservative Citizens at their barbecue is that it was a fundraiser. He was helping them raise money for a private academy that is sponsored by the council, a private school founded by the Citizens Council as an all-white pro-segregation school. It was led for many years by the same Citizens Council field director that Haley Barber was standing with in that disappeared picture. I don't want to show you the faces of the kids who go to that school now because where they go to school is not necessarily their choice. But here's the faculty. This was founded as a segregated school in Mississippi, specifically to keep white kids safe from integration with black kids. The latest figures from the U.S. Department of Education show that in 2007, this school had 403 students, kindergarten through 12th grade. Two students were Asian. Everyone else, the other 401, uh, were white. That's what Haley Barber was raising money for in 2003. The Citizens Council all-white school founded to keep black kids out that today is still doing it. How was it that Mr. Barber phrased his clarification this week? The Citizens Council is totally indefensible, as is segregation. As we reported on the show back in September, Mr. Barber raised two sons in Yazoo City. Uh, they both went to this private school, this private school that admitted its first black student in 1996, uh, when one of his boys was about to graduate. Clearly, Mr. Barber made some kind of peace with segregation, at least in his own family's life. The story is a bit about whether or not Haley Barber is going to be the Republican nominee for president. I think he will not be. But there are very powerful forces in Republican politics who really want Haley Barber to be the party's nominee, or at least a serious contender. And part of the process of making Haley Barber into a national candidate is making us believe the version of Mississippi, the version of Yazoo City, that they have shined up for Haley Barber's political resume, where the citizens' councils were the good guys, and white people didn't have a problem with integration, and the transformational social movement and the murderous conflagrations around it that fought segregation, those just weren't that big a deal, and everything's fine now. The problem for Haley Barber and the Republican Party that wants him to be their presidential nominee is that the rest of us get to refuse to go down that memory hole. It is our country, and history is a real thing. Joining us next is the wonderful Melissa Harris Perry, Princeton professor uh, who knows her Southern history and her American racial politics, uh, and I suspect she is not buying Mr. Barber's version of it. We will be right back. If I could invent a guest for this show, if I could create a person with a computer or an iPad app or a Tinker Toy set with a motor, if I could create the perfect person to discuss Haley Barber's home cook in his own version of the civil rights movement and school desegregation in Mississippi to prep his likely presidential run in 2012 against Barack Obama, that guest that I invented would not be as good as the person at the other end of the satellite machine right now. She is Melissa Harris Perry, Associate Professor of Politics and African American Studies at Princeton and an MSNBC contributor. Melissa, thanks for joining us again. Oh, absolutely. D d does, um, does Haley Barber's uh, magical mystery tour of desegregation and Mississippi in the 50s and 60s, does this, does this lead us to Barack Obama versus Haley Barber for the presidency in 2012? I, I don't think so. Uh, you know, whether or not Haley Barber becomes the GOP candidate um, is is a long and, and tortured couple of years yet. We, we've got some time on that. But I do think that there are some real uh, dangers here that we need to pause and be careful about. One is that someone who is being this extreme about race, and it really is extreme to be romantic about segregation and about Jim Crow, uh, can make an awful lot of room for folks who have very similar policy ideas, but simply do a better job of talking race. And, and most clearly that is Mike Huckabee. Hmm. So, you know, Mike Huckabee talks about race probably better than any other candidate in the 08 um, uh, uh, elections. I mean, really only maybe Barack Obama during the Philadelphia speech and, and John Edwards with his two Americas. But other than that, Mike Huckabee is kind of this straight shooting Southern white man who can talk about racial history. The fact is, though, that when you looked at his policies in the contemporary moment, they are not that dramatically different than that of Haley Barber's. And yet, my bet is that this kind of extremism on the right makes an awful lot of room for somebody like Huckabee to come right on through the, the center right. Well, do, do you think it's sort of a deliberate effort to, 
to push the envelope then to try to make um, things that seem more extreme seem not as extreme. I mean, we've had the Confederacy commemorations without any mention of slavery. Slavery. We've had the reanimation of secession as an idea in conservative politics. We've got, of course, Mr. Barber saying, hey, I was there. Jim Crow wasn't so bad. Do you, do you think this is on purpose to, to try to clear some racial space in, in national politics? You know, I got to say, I, I grew up in immediate post-segregation Virginia. I went to college and, and, North, in, and graduate school in North Carolina. I now make my home in Louisiana. And, and the fact is, I always have a little bit of tension when I start talking about Southern racial history, because there's a part of me that wants to not let the race, rest of the country off the hook on race. I mean, the fact is that segregation, particularly the use of private schools to flee from black children integrating into them, is certainly not an exclusively Southern activity. On the other hand, the reality is that in former Confederate states where there was a secession from the United States, we allowed a revisionist history to enter in as quickly as a decade after the Civil War. And what we are seeing now is simply a reaping of that continual whirlwind of this kind of misguided history. I mean, I grew up in a school system that called the the Civil War, the War of Northern Aggression, or the War Between the States. Uh, so, so it's not necessarily some sort of deliberate process. It, it is, in many ways, just the Southern way. I mean, Jim Crow wasn't that bad if you are the powerful, white, privileged school child. It, it in fact, maybe is sort of invisible how much suffering is occurring as a result of organizations like the Citizens Council. How, how do you, and I, and I realize this is not something that is new, uh, and, and as you say, this is something that has to get fought over constantly, and sometimes it's won and sometimes it's lost, but the struggle never really stops on this. How do you prevent a memory hole, right, about, about something like Deep South segregation when I think the right clearly wants a fight over it? How, how do you avoid historical fact becoming just another contested partisan point that people have a he, sh he said, she said debate about? And it, it, it is weird that they really do want to fight about it. I mean, it, it would be easy enough, uh, particularly as Republicans, to say, oh, look, that was, that was a time in our past. It's all over now, post-racialism. And by the way, that was a Democratic Party that was behaving that way. I mean, that is bad history, but it's, you know, it's pretty palatable. To instead want to actually go in and recover, revive, and, and tell us that this segregationist history is American and is appropriate and is reasonable in our contemporary era, from my perspective, it really is a kind of, and I hate to use this word, it's a kind of existential anxiety. It is a fear that the country is going to be so fundamentally different because of the realities of, of census changes, because of the realities of, of power changes, because women and people of color and now gays in the military all have these sort of growing equal rights. The, the fact is, it's almost like there's just such fear to go back and, and claim these, these white supremacist moments as though they are what really represents America. So the thing that prevents the memory hole is that you fight back against those Texas and Arizona initiatives that start trying to strip ethnic studies from everyone from kindergartners to college students. The fact is history, truth, and the American way, <laughs> in a kind of Superman way, really are on our side here. If we just tell the truth, the fact is we beat this kind of rhetoric. Melissa Harris-Perry of Princeton University, an MSNBC contributor. Uh, thank you so much. I know you had to uh, go a great distance from joining us at the 92nd Street Y to joining us from New Orleans tonight. Uh, I am even more grateful than I usually am, Melissa. Thanks. Thanks. Happy holidays. You too.